aku mulai sir. Alright. Ya yeah, itu sir. Uh, I just uh, confused about the the flow mm -hmm. of my my job in job posting sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes yes yes. Okay, so I would say that uh, about the flow, there will be the flow of your job or the flow of the program. Uh, nah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, the last, the last, the last job. Mm -hmm. uh, terakhir kan ini sir, buat apa tuh yang di Kamunda. Okay. Yeah. Nah itu yang yang saya. Uh, apa bingungkan apakah mm -hmm. ya yang dibuat alurnya itu yang mana gitu oke okay. so uh, please uh, open it now the diagram ya yeah, open the diagram inkom inkamunda atau uh, ya yeah. the, the last diagram was it in uh, kamunda modeler or using kawimu Or using ZB modeler, the last diagram that we create. I forget all. Okay. Um, well, not use incamunda.com. Should be incawimo. Sorry, VPN workflow. All right. Okay. Uh, you can log into Kawimo. Log into Kawimo. I think previously uh, the last one is there. Kawemu. 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 Yeah, that's when uh, you can log in to Kawimu. Okay, yeah, that's true. So that is the uh, complete uh, workflow. But I think since uh, you are new to BPMN, let's just try making a simple uh, workflow diagram. And then the, your task for the next week will be just to run that simple BPMN diagram and integrate it. Uh, integrate Kamunda BPM engine with the Python script that you have already written. 
Okay. So have you downloaded uh, Kamunda modular yet? Yes, yes, have done. Okay. So please uh, run it. Please open Kamunda modular. Okay, so you can create a BPMN diagram and uh, for the next week, please also uh, commit the diagram that you are working to the GitLab repository, okay? Okay, so uh, can you look back to the Kawemo diagram, the full one? Okay, so uh, from the start is Crawl job posting sites, right? The start yeah. circle, the start one, start one. Okay. Uh, so in the Kamunda modeler, please also create that in Kamunda modeler. Make the start one has a title. Yeah. Title. Like this, sir. Yeah. This is the same title. Just uh, double click, double click or set the properties I think you can double click yeah you can type it all right so we, we, we just copy uh, diagram in Kawemo to BPM like that well because that's the entire diagram right since you are new in this uh, let's start for, from the simple first, okay? So that you know how it works uh, for just one external test, okay? You, because the problem is that you are confused, right? So I think that yeah. if you are confused, uh, let's start uh, simple first, and after you know how it works for that simple case, then we can, next week we can expand to a, a more complex case, okay? Yeah. So because, after, sir, mm -hmm. because I think I think we we have to do the the diagram. So I confused why why we we create again. Uh, okay, so the answer is because um, it's, it's not a rem, uh, we are not throwing away the old diagram. So we will be we will still be using the the whole diagram, but. It's it like uh, in software development, you have like unit test, right? So you have an entire application, but then you do unit testing. So just to make it easier to diagnose one problem in uh, one, one task. And if there are any issues and errors and so on, it makes it easier for you to solve the problem. Just one, just one, okay? So this will be just one task. Uh, to make it work and without any timers and so on okay if you can get it this one thing done then we can move to uh, more complex uh, workflow okay. next time okay so after this uh, please create a task and you can call it like the same task as before script jobs ID job collection pages so what what I, I will yeah do. create create a task create a task after this one the script jobs ID okay create a task to the right the of that one yeah where is the task sir? task uh Please. yep that's that's task okay okay so make and a title. What is the title? Yeah, the title is the same as the one in the previous diagram. Like this? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now make an arrow. Uh, or a line from the first to this script jobs ID. Okay. Okay. And then after that will be the end. Okay. 
So make another arrow from there to end. And end event. Yeah, that one. Or alternatively, from that one, there's actually a, like a hover menu that you can click on the event and event. All right. What's that? Yeah. Uh, another way to do it. Uh, now you can delete delete the end event. So I will show you another way to do it that is maybe faster. Click delete delete the end event. Delete. What is delete? Delete is click on the end event first the end one, okay, then press delete or click on the trash icon. Yeah. I, I don't know what, what, I don't know what do you mean. <laughs> nah, the, the trash icon, the trash icon. There it is. Nah, remove, okay. Now click on the task and then you see the menu, right? Nah, so from that one, you just click the circle, the bold circle. The bold this. one. No, no, no. Bold. Nah. Oh. The same thing, right? But it's uh, faster. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now in the end event, please make a title there. What is the title? So before we go to the, yeah. Before we go to the technical detail, I want to ensure, yeah. Uh, job collection pages, scrap it. Job collection pages, scrap it. So this is uh, a good practice to document the process so that it is clear what what's happening before and what's happening after. All right. Okay. Now we have a workflow, a very simple workflow with just one task. Now let's go to the task and change that to. Uh, okay. I think before we do, before we rename the task, let's rename the process itself. Click on the, click on the, on the white space on the diagram and open the properties. Which one, sir? Yeah, that, and then click properties. Please. Click on, yeah, click on outside and then click properties. Okay, and click properties on the right, right sidebar. Uh, go right again, right, right, that's left. Right, okay, go to the middle of, no, no, right, 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 uh, where is right? Right is here. Go right, yeah, right again, to the right again. No, 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 don't go back, right, right. Right, okay, then go to the middle of the screen. Okay, go to the middle. Okay, done again. Nah, that's the oh. properties panel. Now I rename. Know. Yeah, now you know. Okay, now I think you can uh, use name as, hmm, this is jobs, right? Okay, I would say this is uh, jobs.ops. Okay, jobs dot script dot jobs ID. Okay, so I think the name would be ID is jobs dot jobs dot script dot jobs ID. Okay, jobs dot script or, or jobs dot crawl jobs dot crawl dot jobs ID. Oh. Dot Jobs Job, ID. What, okay, job, uh, uh, let let me write it uh, using the chat. So I think it's I think this will be better. Okay, uh, use the name I gave you in the chat room. Or maybe not crawl jobs dot crawler. Ah, this, I think this is much better. All right. Okay, and make a name. I think the name would be uh, crawl jobs ID. Okay, 
Crouch of Society. This this one is a human name. So I think from you can do something like this. What the name? Yeah, what the name? All right. Okay. And now we focus on the task. So click on the task and click on the wrench icon. So because this is this will be a, an external task or a surface task. So click on the wrench icon. Wrench, wrench, wrench icon. This. Yeah, like a seperti sendok ya bentuknya ya. Apa sih kunci? This. Nah, okay. Setting. Mm -hmm. And this will be a service task. Okay, so this will call uh, call your Python script. Okay, so on the properties panel, go to implementation. Mm, yeah, the, the first one, still the first one. Okay, change the implementation. Uh, no, 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 the task, yeah. Go to implementation. Go. Nah, that one. And choose external. Okay. Now, you will need to define a topic here. So, what's the name of the topic? Okay. This will be jobs.crawler. Um, okay. Script job collection pages, yeah. Script job collection pages. Okay, use this one as the topic name. So long. Okay, great. Now, we have a simple workflow. Uh, please save this file first. And it's better to save this file on your Git working folder. So when you commit it to Git, then this file will be saved there. I think a good name will be as uh, the same as the process name, and the process name is this one. This one. So, or with the PPM N, will be like this. Like this. Sir. Yep. All right. Okay. And one thing that we need is the input URL. Okay. So when we want to scrape a job collection page, uh, we need to know which job collection page that we want to scrape. Okay. So uh, please open your job collection page uh, scraping script in Python. In Git or uh, well, you can use uh, the one in your computer just to give a illustration. So now go to the start event. Click the start event. Okay. Now click on forms. Click on forms. Okay. Now add a form field. Uh, you can leave the form key blank. All right. So in form fields, please add this one. What? Add what? Okay. Uh, I put on the chat. And label is source job collection URL. Okay. So put that as the form field. And 
and the ID is the, the one above. All right, and the type is string. Eh? Is that a type? Type is string. And for default value, uh, please uh, get a default value, maybe uh, the one from Bandung. From Bandung. Yeah. No, no, I mean the URL, the URL, the jobs ID URL for Bandung. Uh, I don't know what, what do you mean. Uh, this, is the, the, this is the form field, right? And the form field is the URL of the source job collection. So this must be a URL, okay? So you can go, uh, okay, uh, open the jobs ID web page. Oh. Open the jobs ID web page and go to Bandung. Yeah, go to Bandung or search for Bandung. All right. Okay. All right, now copy the URL, yeah, that one. So because there are lots of uh, job collection page URLs and this one is the default, but it can be changed. Okay, it can be changed. All right, so now let's save this and try to de deploy this one. Okay, let's save this and then try to deploy this one. Okay, now click on uh, deploy. Click on deploy above. Okay, in the toolbar, in the toolbar there is an icon for uh, deploy, the, the left one. Uh, not too much left, yeah. Right, right again, right, right again, right again, okay, right again. Let's go right, go really right. Ah, that one. Okay. Okay, that's good. Now you can go to task list. Right. Now click on start process. Great. And yes. yep. Okay. Now you have a URL, right? The default is uh, that one, but actually you can change uh, this URL to another URL like Longan Kerja di Jakarta or Surabaya and something. Okay, so we can control the whole uh, scraping process uh, from this one. Okay, so click start. Okay, so now the process instance is already created. So click on the home icon and go to cockpit. All right, so now you can click on running process instances. Okay, and you can click on crawl jobs ID. Okay, nice, all right. So now you have this, uh, you can click on the one in the, uh, and you can also click the left, bottom left to show the bottom sidebar, yeah? Bottom, that's, that's top, go down, bottom is down. Yep, that one. All right. So click on the process instance below. Okay, click on the process instance ID. Go down again, go down again. Yep, click on the ID. Right. Now you can see there is a variable here, right? The variable is source job collection URL, there's type string, and then value, the same one as uh, we have, uh, you have inputted before, right? Okay. And now the job is that you need to create a worker. Okay, you need to create a worker. So um, it will be similar as the script that you have created. But the difference is that this worker will need to connect to Kamunda and take, uh, what do you call it? Fetch and lock. Uh, 
take a take a job ya. Yeah. Uh, take a take a worker job and then do the the scraping and then give the results back to Kamunda. Okay, just for this one task. Okay. So if you can make that happen for one task, then that means you can make that happen for all of the other tasks. Okay. For scraping the job collection page, for uh, saving the database, and so on and so on. Okay. And with Kamunda Cockpit, as you can see now, now the current process instance is stuck on the one task, right? As you see that there's a one blue icon there. Yeah. And you can imagine if there are many jobs, then there will be uh, this diagram will be more complex and there will be more uh, blue circles somewhere. The other is in that process, the other in which process. And if it's working well, then they will move to the next task. But if something goes wrong, then uh, yeah, there will be a, an incident and we can uh, open the process instance to know which which one is wrong. Okay, so this is why we use Kambuna Cockpit. So we know uh, the process and we know which one is going right or which one is uh, going wrong. Okay, so do you have any question up to this point? <laughs> I don't know. Uh what will mm -hmm. I ask you? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that you uh you 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 want to rush. Okay, so let's get it everything done. But um, I think my approach is that you should do it like one step by step. Okay, just one baby step, one little step, and when you understand that. Just one simple step, and uh, it will be easier to have a complete uh, system. Yeah. So that's why, uh, for example, just this one, just this one workflow with one one task. Uh, you need to get to get this done first. Okay, so. Uh, previously, you asked, oh, so what happens with the workflow diagram that is already complete? Well, the problem is that uh, that's already complex, which we will still use, but you need now to create a worker. And you have not created a worker before, a Kamunda worker before. So I will say that there will be problems, okay? So if there are problems and your workflow is too big and too complex, then you will be even more confused. So you, uh, I need to limit the thing that you are working so it is, it's as small as possible. So if there are problems, it's easy to solve. That, that's uh, that's the reason. Okay. So oh, that why we use Kamunda. Uh, yeah. Why we use Kamunda? Do you want to ask that? Why why are we using Kamunda? Why aren't we just creating a Python script and then run everything in Python, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Because Do you know maybe, why? Because we want to uh, automate the the script or like that. Yeah, one is that we want to automate, but we can also automate using Python. That's a uh, that's a one one way to do it. Uh, but there are several factors why we use Kamunda or BPM uh, technology. Yeah, I have to say that BPM is just a technology. No, uh, no company needs uh, needs to use BPM. A company can can do data science without Kamunda. It's possible, okay. But however, Kamunda has benefits, okay. Just like any technology, you don't have to use uh, maybe airplane to go from Bandung to Singapore. Yeah, you don't have to use airplane. You can use ship, okay, to go from Bandung to Singapore, but it will maybe take more time and so on. So there are trade-offs. Maybe it's cheaper, yeah, but uh, a plane will be faster. 
So in this case, Kamunda, what are the benefits of Kamunda compared to when we just do the script all in Python? One is that it makes it easier to collaborate on how it works. Okay. So for example, in Lovia, all of our team members need to know about BPMN. So that's why when everyone knows about BPMN and understands BPMN, for example, are you internship forever here? Maybe, but maybe not. Okay. When you're, uh, when you have finished your internship at Lovia, that means that someone else needs to be able to maintain the source code and the system. Okay. If I just give that person a Python source code, maybe 1000 lines long and so on, that will be uh, harder to understand. It will be easier to understand if everyone knows PPMN, I give the PPMN diagram first. Okay. So, okay. So what's the workflow? Where's the diagram? Also, oh, this is the diagram. And from that diagram, then everybody knows uh, the, the, the new member will know. Okay. So these are the surface tasks. Okay. So then when making a change, that person will know, okay, so I think I need to improve uh, this part, okay? This part or that part, okay? And that part is using with script. And what are the variables? The variables is there, okay? That's one, that's one reason. So to make it e easy to understand about the whole process without thinking about the internal details, yeah? Internal details, whether is that using beautiful soup? Is that using Python? Is that using Node.js, REST API? Yeah, whatever, yeah. This makes it easier to understand the whole process. Okay. Is, is this part understandable? Yeah. Okay. And the other uh, benefit is that it makes it easier to know how the system works during production. Okay. This is an example. Uh, when the system runs, there will not be only one process. There will be many processes like you seen here. Okay. So now this process instance, this single one is just for running a scrapping for lowongan kerja di Bandung. So as you can see, there will be lowongan kerja di Jakarta, scrapy lowongan kerja di Surabaya, lowongan kerja di Medan and so on. Okay. And Kamunda makes it easy to track these processes. Okay, this is just simple, but can you imagine if the workflow is complex and there are many workflows running at the same time, sometimes they are working, sometimes they are not working, there is a bug, there is error, the process is not working. We need to be able to know where, in which, in which worker, in which step the, uh, the problem and what are the uh, inputs, yeah? And what are the inputs and what are the outputs, okay? For, from each step. And Kambuna makes it easy to uh, check this, okay? Okay, can I show you one thing? Uh, can you go back to processes in Kambuna cockpit? Because I see that there are several incidents, yeah? Can you click on the processes? So this is, they call it operational feasibility, yeah. operational feasibility. Okay, uh, you can see there are ones with the incidents, yeah? Four incidents. Let's click that one. Yes, sir. Yeah, let's click that one. This is an example where hopefully you can see that, okay. So now there are four processes that are stuck in that one because it's the status uh, error, yeah? So click on that one, any one. Okay. Now you can see that one incidence, I can see all the variables, right? Do you think this is useful? This is useful, right? Okay, so this is wrong. And in that part, as you can see, there are two tasks there. The post message to Lovia and then the post message to Miluf. But here, without knowing the source code, you can already see, okay, something is wrong with post message. Lovia, one error, and these are the variables. That means 
uh, we can uh, we can debug the issue easier okay because maybe if this is a more complex task with many many microservice many workers we can pinpoint okay this is the problem and using kamunda it's possible if one task is not working we can retry just one task we don't have to retry the whole process just that one task okay now click on the uh, you can redo button on the top right go to the right okay go to the right again and a little bit down a little bit down uh, down one okay that one above uh, that one okay now click on it yep all right and uh then i'll fill okay Second one uh try to close and then go to incident step incidents all right and uh, click on the action on the red one yeah that one okay and then we try okay click okay and we'll see and you can see that the incident has a error message request failed with status 400 right? okay you can click on it yeah, you can click on it and is there any yeah this one does not have information okay now you can close and try to refresh the window i want to know if this is working now or it's still the error Where is... it's still error yeah just refresh uh, refresh the yeah reload the page okay it's still error all right um yeah but in this case it's nice to know that we have a okay then i think it's yeah there now it's nice to know that we have a process that is failing and it's failing on that one and we know and yeah after that we can try to diagnose the problem and maybe stop or uh well do anything else okay so that's this is one of the benefit of using kamunda that's it does that answer your question uh, okay uh so for for my my job mm -hmm. uh, what task uh, i must convert to uh, to kamunda okay what the task yeah the task is just this I one must... okay okay this is the first right yeah this is the first of course then there will be other tasks but try to get this one uh, done first okay so let's get this one done first okay uh, unfortunately in python the code is not very nice but it's possible go to about.lovia.life what sir about.lovia.life okay and go to handbook this yep and go to kamunda okay infrastructure kamunda okay and then go to kamunda workers external task on the left sidebar no. Yep, that one. Okay, so these are the things. Uh, yeah, it's a guy that I create. You can skip the NestJS one and just go to the Python implementation. And yeah, the Python worker. And yeah, I hope uh, I hope this will work. Yeah, I hope this will work. If you have any errors while implementing this, then uh, yeah, just let me know on uh, on Lovia chat. 
give a screenshot which error that you get and so basically what the worker does is that it is a python script then when run it will connect to kamunda it will get a job with all the parameters needed and you can see there is a to do there i think it's online uh, you can scroll below yeah it's line 20 something i guess yeah, that to do and 60, 61, yeah. Line 61 is that you will get the parameters from Kamunda. 61, that's 70, 61. Yeah, that's 61. Okay. So you will get the body uh, from Kamunda, and that will be the parameters. And then you call your script to do the crawling, and then you call self.complete. Okay. When you call self.complete, you will return the result of the crawling, uh, the, the JSON one, yeah? The JSON one, you return to Kamunda, and then uh, the worker is done. And that's it. And then that's, that's what will be done on all of the other workers. But if you can get this one worker done, I hope uh, you'll understand why it's done this way. Uh, mm. I, I must use in this case for, mm. for what? Uh, connect in yeah, yeah, that's true. So um, I have to say that it's unfortunate that uh, connecting to Commander they don't really have a a nice library to work uh, to wrap this up, and like we have to use a template like this. But yeah, but as long as it works, it it doesn't matter because this is just like a template, yeah, just a template, and. Uh, our actual uh, code is the crawler. So it's like uh, similar to wrapping your code in a REST API or microservice. And in this case, it's wrapping your code in a, uh, in a worker. Well, they call it worker. Yeah. Actually, what this worker does is just to call the REST API of Kamunda and get a, a, get a job, and then it will do the job and then send the result back to Kamunda, and that's it. <laughs> okay, so is this is this clearer or you are still confused? Actually, I'm still confused. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, can you ask me uh, which part that you are confused in? Uh, I'm confused for 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 so so I must. Uh, create uh, uh, what the name uh, the flow like this. Well, for next week, I think this is the flow that you will be using. It's already done. Oh, you don't have okay. to create another flow for next week. What you need to create for next week is implement the worker, just the worker, because this is the flow that you will be using. It's it's already done. 
this should work. Oh, oh, okay. You you can uh, you already tested right? You deploy to Kamunda, it's working. You can create the process. The process is live. It's really there. Uh, the process is now still work uh, still working on the server. All it does is all it needs now is for the worker. Okay, so it's waiting. It's for it's waiting for the worker to do it. Is waiting for the worker to do it because uh, because it's already running on Kamunda, so this is the flow that you will be using. Okay, so is that clear enough, or there is still confusion? I don't know. Kod ini, mm -hmm. ini nanti, <laughs> mm -hmm. jadi kod ini nanti saya gunakan buat to make the worker. So this is the source code of your worker actually. Worker. Yeah. Worker. So this is the. Mm -hmm. What? What is? Why? Why? Why we use? The worker for for okay. The... Okay, so why do we use a worker? Uh, this is actually an architectural principle. Yeah, we use a worker to separate between the orchestrator and the actual service that is uh, doing the job. Okay, the orchestrator. Is one thing, Kamunda is the orchestrator, and then there's workers who are just doing the job. Uh, let's, okay, let's make an analogy. I hope this, uh, this is a good analogy. How many people are needed to create a house, to build a house? Maybe more, more than one. More than one. Che, yeah. uh, you make a, a house with two floors. How many people do you think? Maybe, maybe 10 people. 10 people, okay, that's good. 10 people. Are all 10 people doing the same thing? I think no. No, okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe one person will use the pasir and cement, okay? And one mm -hmm. person is working on the batu bata. Another person is working on, uh, I don't know, taking materials from the truck to the house and so on okay there are 10 people it's with different jobs so yeah. these 10 people are the workers mm -hmm. but there is another person missing here not just the workers can you just tell the workers okay workers build me a house and it will be done no why who will coordinate the workers Do you, need, do you need a coordinator or not? Or you just leave yeah, them yeah. running? You need a coordinator, right? Yeah. You need a, they call it mandor, yeah? yeah mandor. You need a mandor. If, if it's a big project, you need a mandor. If just like painting a, a wall, you don't need mandor. Okay, so this mandor is Kamunda. That means this Kamunda is controlling all of the workers, okay? It tells one worker, okay, you worker, you create the, uh, you create the cement, the pasir, and another worker, you make that from here to there, and it checks if check the result of the worker. For example, 
the worker uh, that is taking the uh, cement says that, oh, cementnya habis. You don't have cement. So do you do you uh, do you leave the worker to to buy cement? No, the mandor will okay. Just you wait. I will call the uh, store and bring you cement. I will buy cement for you. Okay, because the worker's job is to do the cement. It does not need to go to the store and buy the cement and bring them blah blah blah. Okay, so this is what the Kamunda does to coordinate each of the workers. Okay. So now what you are doing in the next week is you have a worker, right? Actually, you already have a worker. You already have a script, but the worker cannot communicate with Kamunda. Okay. For example, yang tadi, uh, you have a worker that can do some men, but he cannot communicate with the mandor. Cannot communicate with so, the mandor. So, so, so we are using this uh, this code for communicating the the hmm. Kamunda. Yeah, it's for communicating communicating with Kamunda. So the worker knows what URL it needs to process. Okay, and when, because uh, for like what the example is just the worker is just a uh, the one that got took some men, yeah. But the problem is how much cement should we aduk and at what time? Because uh, he needs to be able to aduk cement at the proper time, not too little and also not too much. Okay, at the proper time. And in this case, the uh, orchestrator or Kamunda decides when this worker should do the crawling or scraping and what page that it needs to crawl. And then that's it. Okay. And for example, on the when, uh, I can use Kamunda to control whether I want to run this scraping one uh, every day, or maybe every five days, or maybe every 10 days, or maybe every hour, and all I have to do is just I have to control Kamunda. I have I do not need to touch the source code of the Python code. Okay, that's that's the um, that's one benefit of using Kamunda. Okay. Um. I would say that most of the code here you do not need to chat. You do not need to touch, okay? So uh, in theory, the only part of code that you need to touch is the one in uh, 61. So even in that line, all you have to do is I, I do not recommend that you copy paste your code in there, no. Uh, your code should be like import, yeah? You should like import your code and then call your code and then you have the JSON object as a result, right? And then you call self complete, and then that's it. Of course, there what are other. Hmm? Can you can you repeat that one one? Can okay. You... So do not copy paste your code into this script. Okay. Don't copy paste. Mm -hmm. What you do is that you import. You have a, your code. Make your code uh, importable. And you have a function there that you can you can call from here. So this code just calls your function, and then your function gives a, a response, and then the response here you call self complete to send the response back to Kamunda. That should okay, be so, it. Uh, Minister, mm -hmm. kan saya udah udah banyak nih. Kemarin kan udah banyak buat apa buat script? Oke. Okay. Script mana saja yang script mana saja yang saya yang masukkan ke sini? Uh, just one saya. first, just one, just one. The first for one. Example, just the first one. For, for the first one script jobs collection page. Just that one first. Like I said, 
there are several scripts, there are several workers, yeah. You have made the worker for ngaduk semen, you have made the worker for uh, pasang jendela, you have made the worker for uh, ngecat tembok. But let's do this one thing first. After you can get it done, then it will be very easy for you to, the, to do the other things because that will be just copy and paste. Just one first, okay, just one first. I import the uh, script. So yeah, this, this script, this script should be imported. This script should be imported so that you can call this script from the worker. But for, for this script, mm -hmm. uh, saya juga nggak nggak usah ngomong ngomong gitu ya. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully you don't need to change anything, but just make this script. Uh, there is a function that you can call ya, yeah? importable. Okay. I, I, I don't I don't have the function in the script. <laughs> well, then you can make a function to do that. Okay, let 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 me show you. Okay, let me show you what I mean with my own function yeah with my own function so for example if i have okay uh, okay can you see my screen now Yes, yes, I see. Okay, so let's say that I have a script, okay? And this is my script. Okay. Okay, there's no function here, right? This is just a script. Uh, this one, the pine, All right? And now I should be able to run this script. Okay. Now what I mean is that when then you have a worker. Okay. Okay. For example, you get the uh, blah 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 from Kamunda. Okay. And then you have data from Kamunda. Yeah? For example, uh, Kamunda API, blah blah blah. Let's take uh that the data is uh, amran okay you get this from kamunda api and now and to do is your own code now what we need to do is that we need to call this test one dot p okay we need to be able to import this test one right yeah. And then call a function here. So what we do do is that we have a function, maybe an grid, and then have a name. Now we can do like this. Okay. So now we can call test one grid there with the data. Is this the correct syntax? Just the wrong syntax. Okay. Why I cannot have this here? Is this Python? Something like this. Of course, this is the simple one, but basically all of your source code, you put it under a function so that we can call so maybe on your function, you have a function to uh, to scrape. Now you have a scrape job collection page and then source job collection URL, right? Now I am scraping this URL. And you can say, yeah, scraping done. 
blah, blah, do something. Scrap this beautiful soup. And then you return the result. Okay, for example, the result is uh, type and so on and so on. Yeah. Uh, what was it? Collection pitch, I think. Yeah. Now that means the worker can get the result and it can call self complete with the result. Something like this. Okay. But, or basically, I can do print the result. Okay, now when I run this, okay, oh, no attribute grid, should be this one. Okay, and then we get the result. So there's a worker, and then there's your script. The worker's job is to get the data or command or request for Kamunda and then it calls your script here and after the script is done you have a result and then the worker sends the result back to Kamunda and then Kamunda will continue and do other things but the worker's job is done. Okay, is that clearer or is there any still confused? Yes, yes, sir. So the point I must uh, maybe modification, modification our our script. Sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is is not a major uh, modification. Yeah, like I told you before, is uh, yeah, it's like adding this one uh, wrapping the script inside the function right that's why wrapping the script inside the function and then instead of this job collection url hard coded because maybe previously this one is not a parameter previously this one is hard coded right you put this here mm -hmm. but now the URL should be from a parameter. And uh, the parameter is given by the worker. And ultimately, that parameter is not decided by the worker, but the parameter is from Kamunda. Kamunda decides what the URL or any other parameters that need to be done. So is that clearer? <laughs> to use that uh, ngaduk semen analogy, si pengaduk semen memang bisa ngaduk semen, but he does not decide how much semen diaduk. Mandornya yang bilang, hey kamu tukang ngaduk semen, tolong aduk semen 5 kilo pasirnya dengan komposisi berapa persen, airnya berapa persen, ini berapa persen, kan gitu. Jadi yang nentuin mandornya. The worker just do what the mandor tells him to do. So, sir, how can I check uh, making the, the code mm -hmm. is or not mm. okay so in any case if you have any error then you can just contact me give me a screenshot and uh, maybe uh, I can give you a suggestion or if you still are having problems then we can uh, schedule a, a pair programming session okay but I think Basically, by you giving me screenshots and detailed information, I should be able to help 
uh, if you have any problems with that. And if you do not have errors with that, then that means it should be working. And how to check that? You can go to uh, our Kamunda website, yeah, kamunda.lovia.life to see if your uh, your job is working. Okay. If you go to Kamunda website and it says that the job is completed, then that means, okay, that's working. And then we can move on to the next uh, stage. I think enough. Okay. Okay, that's good. So I would say if, uh, if that's clear, then um, you can conclude the meeting. Okay. Yeah, conclude is uh, kesimpulan, greeting, yeah, menutup meeting. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay for the night. Thank you for uh, uh, time for for, for um, my my job. And then yeah, I think I get uh, a new knowledge about about uh, Kamunda. Then I think it's it very hard maybe. <laughs> and then maybe uh, this enough for for uh, this question. Uh, this night and then yeah again thank you very much yes sir assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh okay waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh